Hi there, I'm Black Bright. Welcome to my channel. First time you're passing through, please like, subscribe, share, and all those kind of things. And for my existing subscribers, thank you for your comments and your feedback. Um, today I was asked to do this video, and it's about why good men come last, or for want of a better word, why women aren't attracted to good men. Well, I was kind of thinking about that and I don't think it's got anything to do with women not being attracted to good men. I think it's to do with the relationships they had with their parents and their upbringing and the fact that they could be damaged, emotionally damaged, physically damaged, psychologically damaged. And depending on how you grew up, if you grew up with parents who were cold and unfeeling, who knew never validated you, or if you grew up with absent parents, you know, somebody wasn't there for you. And so you, you felt kind of vulnerable and alone. All of those all of these things will impact your decisions as an adult. Now, if you have grown up with an unfeeling parent, and remember, parents are the ones who we rely on to, as a gauge on how we're supposed to be treated as adults. So if you've grown up with parents who are cold and unfeeling, if you get a nice guy who is showing you attention, <clears throat> who's showing you affection, who's being considerate, who's thoughtful, who's respectful, you're going to go, like, hey, what's he want? What's he up to? I don't trust him. There's something fishy about him. You're going to, your antenna is going to go up. Your mistrust antenna. And so anything that a good guy does, you're going to treat it with scepticism. And what it has to do with, it's not like, it's not that um, good guys um, come last, because as we know, there's a lot of good guys in good relationships, positive relationships, but that is because the woman is whole, she's complete, she's done her work, her inner work, and she's also you know, become a fulfilled human being. Those kind of women will attract nice guys. But, you know, it's no point a nice guy getting disappointed if he approaches a woman and she, she treats him like crap or she doesn't give him the, um, the kudos that he requires. You know, that good guy knows he's dealing with somebody who's damaged. It's got nothing to do with him. He doesn't have to start being horrible or start being mean or start being aggressive because a lot of men think that unless they're nasty or unless they're um, rude and unless they're unfeeling, they're not going to get a good woman. So all I'm saying is that it has a lot to do with upbringing. That's just my opinion. Because if you think about it, if your parents didn't show you love, if they didn't nurture you, if they didn't kind of see to your needs and attend to your needs, if a nice guy comes up to you and he's saying, oh, look, I'm going to take you here. I'm going to take you out for a meal. You know, they put their arm, they put their coat around you to keep you warm. They put their umbrella up to keep you dry. You know, they pull out the chair for you and they do all of these things that nice guys do. They're actually thoughtful and considerate. You don't don't have to they have, it's almost like they preempt your needs you don't have to tell them what you want you don't have to tell them what you need because they've been brought up in a certain way that they know how to treat a woman but it's wasted if that that good treatment is on somebody who is damaged that is where the problem lies so it's like i said it's not about um you know a good guy feeling, um, finishing last. It's more to do with he needs to pick a woman who is whole. Um, I wrote down a few little things. What is it about nice men that women find off-putting? What damaged women find off-putting? Attentiveness comes as being fake to a woman who's damaged or a woman who hasn't healed herself. 
you know, sometimes if a woman's history, because remember, a lot of women, they go for the same type of men. And if they go for the same bad type of men all the time, if somebody is attentive, they are going to be sceptical because they're not used to it. Um, sincerity is viewed with scepticism. If somebody's sincere and they say, you know, look, I'm going to make sure I get there on time so you don't have to wait. I'll call you before I leave home so you know that I'm on my way. And, you know, they, they, they show up and they're, you know, they're very, very nice, thoughtful, considerate, respectful. So, and for a woman who's been treated, you know, rough and the man turns up when he feels like it and, you know, he's either, you know, doesn't return her calls or whatever these bad guys do. I don't know what they do, but, you know, the majority of them, from what I hear, you know, that it's, it's got to do with ghosting, not returning calls, disappearing off the, off the planet of the earth. Um, let me see um, not caring about the woman's feelings she'll tell her what she likes and what she doesn't like and he'll totally ignore it he, he has his own agenda he's more likely to um, put himself before her and you know just generally be obnoxious and unfeeling and cold and aloof and emotionally unavailable so if she's used to having somebody like that when somebody who is considerate and who is emotionally available and is somebody who you can talk to, then, you know, she is going to be a bit wary. And I guess, I guess it works the other way around. Well, I don't know if it does. I don't know if, I've never heard about um, good woman fi um, finishing last or, you know, hmm. I've never heard of it around the other way around, but I guess it could be. Um, thoughtfulness is seen as what is he after? Because you're so used to having somebody who's trying to take from you. You know, they're, they're um, always after something, always trying to get away with what they can get away with. You know, they're, they're thoughtless. So if you're used to somebody who's thoughtless instead of thoughtful, then when this nice guy comes around who is thoughtful, you're going to question and think he's after something because that is what you're used to. You're used to men who are after something. Um, also, strong women, they feel as though they're going to push a nice person away. You know, I don't know why that is, but for some reason, strong women tend to be um, assertive maybe. Um, confident. Um, I don't know the traits of a strong woman really, but yeah, I would just say assertive and confident for now. And for some reason, they feel that a nice guy won't be able to handle them. But you'd be surprised, a nice guy is more likely to accept a woman who is strong and who is confident and is not going to feel threatened by her. Whereas the bad guy or the, you know, the charismatic or, you know, the macho, whichever way you want to call it, is going to be threatened by that confidence, is going to be threatened by that um, assertiveness. They're going to see it as some kind of competition, some kind of fight, you know, a vying for who has power, a power struggle. They're not going to be able to see that woman for, you know, in her own you know, in her own element. And she's probably going to have to suppress her element in order to keep the peace. So it's, it's, it's not correct to assume that just because somebody is nice, they're not going to be able to accept a strong personality. You'd be surprised. They can. Um, charismatic men with swagger know how to handle a strong personality. And that's a misnomer. Um, it's, the appearance is that they can um, handle a strong personality because they're willing to challenge you and they're willing to um, upstage you and they're willing to answer you back and they're willing to be kind of aggressive in quotes. OK, and that can be perceived as being, you know, able to handle a strong woman 
But what it is, you'll find over a period of time, these macho men or these charismatic or men with swagger, they tend to be actually intimidated by somebody who is like that. And what they are trying to do in challenging you is kind of saying, you know, it's, it's more like a challenge as opposed to a conversation. So it's a totally different dynamic. They can engage and it can have the appearance that they can manage you. But you'll find over time they could become defensive, they could become aggressive, you know, they could be quite rude or disrespectful over time. It all depends. And you have, you'll find yourself walking on eggshells. Um, they're good to look at, these guys with swagger. But sometimes you'll find they, they're not as considerate as the good guy or the nice guy. Um, if they're macho, they could be unfeeling. I'm not saying that's always the case, but they could come over as unfeeling. Like I said, unemotion, um, emotionally unavailable. Uh, they might give you their time, but they'll avoid responsibility because they're just usually in for a good time and just want to spend time with you, but they don't want none of the responsibility. They don't want to hang around too long to get too involved in whatever. They don't want to start um, doing anything that will cost them anything, whether it's money, whether it's, um, whether it's money, whether it's not necessarily time, but anything that's going to take away their emotion, anything that's going to get them too emotionally involved, they will stay away from. So they kind of build up a wall. So um, so that's what I mean. They'll give you their time, but avoid responsibility, responsibility in relationships and stuff like that. They can be selfish and they get away with doing the minimum if they can. Um, they can be aloof which means they can be quite distant. And so, yeah, so all of this comes from how, when you're choosing whether or not um, you want a good guy as opposed to a bad guy, it goes back to, like I said, your upbringing, your parents. Um, did you lack validation? Were there any compliments? Were your parents passive? Were you ignored? Were you rejected? So a negative um, parental relationship will have an impact on your modern day or your adult relationships. And, you know, as much as you say, oh, you know, you've grown and, you know, your parents don't affect you. Believe me, they do. Remember, you know, especially if you've grown up with them, they are your influences. They are your first influences from the time you're a child until you're whatever age you leave home, they are your influences. So regardless of how you rebel against them and you, you think that you are your own person, you have been indoctrinated from a very, very early age with their values and what their expectations. And when you grow up, that is what's going to be projected on any relationship that you're in. Um, so if you did have an absent parent, um, and I'm not talking about somebody who is mean or abusive, absence is a validation of love. Absence of validation of love, sorry, could mean you do not expect it or you feel uncomfortable when it's expressed. And that's the same thing I'm saying. If you didn't get it while you were young, you will feel uncomfortable expressing emotion, expressing feelings, and um, you're not going to expect that kind of um, adornment or, you know, you get some people, they just place you on a pedestal and you're going to be thinking, you know, why are they placing me on a pedestal? You know, what is it? You know, is there something about them? Are they a bit dodgy? So you get really, really sceptical. Um, and if they weren't around to give love or validation, could be could be why you're having difficulty with compliments and expressions of goodwill and affection. Your upbringing and parents could have something to do with why you repeat the same negative pattern instead of choosing loving and nurturing relationships that nice guys have to offer. So if you have been attracting um, the bad guys, you need to look at how you were raised and you can change things around. You can analyse it. You know, you, it's not too late. 
because sometimes I think, oh, all men are the same, all men are the same, you know, every time, every bloke I meet, he's a bloody liar, he, he's unfaithful, he's this and he's that. That doesn't have to be the case. If you're choosing the same type of person, they don't have to look the same because some people seem to think it's the way they look, a certain appearance that, and it, visually it could be a certain appearance, but then somebody might think, oh, well, that one's wearing a suit, that one's in an office, that one is a construction engineer, but they still have that same element about them that you find attractive and it is that swagger and it is that you know that kind of sexy look that kind of wheels you in and it's about getting past that it's about getting past that chemistry and that physical attraction to being practical and finding out whether this person is good for you can lift you up can make you feel better about yourself so that's all I've really got to do about saying um, why nice guys follow last. They don't, they don't um, come last at all. It's only like with women choosing the wrong, the bad men, the nice guys are choosing the wrong women and that's all it is. But if you get a balance and your nice guys start choosing whole women, they'll be fine. And if women start examining themselves, they then become nice women and they won't take advantage of the nice guys. They won't be rude. They won't disrespect them. They won't take them for granted. And that's what life is all about. And that's all for now. Bye bye.